This is Dear Hallmark. Each week, I'll bring you reviews of your favorite Hallmark movies and TV shows. So grab a drink and let's see what we're getting into with this episode. It is a new day, y'all. We have made it. Welcome to Dear Hallmark. My name is Dara. And we're going to talk about Chesapeake Shores for this episode. First of all, why didn't y'all tell me this first episode was so long? (laughs) How could y'all not have warned me? So, y'all, I did a poll in my stories if y'all would be interested in watching Chesapeake Shores. I got a resounding yes. And so here we are. Um, I wasn't expecting this first episode to be a movie. This joint was a minute, I'm sorry, an hour and 21 minutes long. (laughs) It took me all day because I was doing other stuff in between because again, I wasn't ready to watch a movie. I thought at best it would be 40 minutes at best. I wasn't ready for the other 30, almost 40 minutes. So in any event, um, we're here. And Chesapeake Shores, their fifth season is about to air on August 15th, I think, which is like a a few weeks. So we're probably not going to make it uh, to the fifth season. Um, But maybe by the time the fifth season is over, who knows? It depends on how many episodes are in each season with this Chesapeake Shores journey that I'm about to embark on. Um, I do remember watching the first half of this first episode, like the first scene I remember, like her being on the treadmill outside in the balcony. First of all, can we just talk about that? Where they, we do treadmills on the balcony. I, I I never knew that was a thing. (laughs) I did not know that was a thing. But, um, for those of you who don't even know what the heck I'm talking about, there's this show called Chesapeake Shores that is on Hallmark Channel. It stars Jesse Metcalf. That's the only... Oh, and my dude from uh, from Coming Home for Christmas. I do not know his real name, but his character on Coming Home for Christmas is Kip. And that's what I call him. I call him Kip. And we also have Brendan Penny in it. Um, those are the only three people that I recognize. All of the women I don't recognize at all in this series. But this series focuses around a woman named Abby who used to be a Wall Street tycoon of some variety. Again, we have another obscure financial position that we're not completely sure what she does. But she goes home for a much-needed reprieve for a weekend, and that weekend turns into her moving there. And that's where we kind of get with this first episode. This first episode lays the groundwork, which is probably why it was an hour and 21 minutes long. Like, I understand you have to lay the groundwork for whatever, but... Again, I think they could have broke this up into two episodes. <laughs> but let's let me introduce you to the characters. So like I said, we have Abby. Abby is this boss lady, pencil skirt wearing, high pony, high like twist. She has two kids. She lives in New York. She works on Wall Street. Her life is just together. She's divorced. She has a nanny. Um, I'm trying to think, am I missing anything? Her, I think that's it in terms of what we know about. She's very structured. She's on a strict diet. She juices. She doesn't really eat carbs. She's skinny. She wears heels. I mean, any like that whole persona. When she gets to Chesapeake Shores, we're introduced to her sister, Jess, who off cuff, I'm like, oh, she's going to be annoying. She seems like the sister that just sucks you dry, who that just bleeds you for everything you got. Like, I understand your family, but do you do anything for yourself? And the thing that annoyed me was that Jess is too prideful to go to her dad for help, but yet she's going to ask her sister to help her? What? That that really burned me. That burned me so bad. I'm like, you have all the pride and ego in the world that when your dad offers to help you, you you want to say no, but you're going to go ask your sister, can you help me with this loan? Can you help me? Like, what? She seems like a leech. She really does. Now, I, that may be harsh. And again, this is the first, ep- this is what I'm getting first episode from Jess. She seems very flighty. Like, she just does stuff off of impulse. Um, She coins herself as the fun aunt, but she seems incredibly flighty to me. She just randomly decided to open a bread and breakfast. 
okay, you're just going to start a business. And the the house is in, I won't say it's in complete shambles, but the ceiling is coming down in the kitchen, which is kind of the heart of the B&B because you can't have the second B without a kitchen. <laughs> you can't have breakfast without a kitchen. And then we are introduced to Gran, who I see she is the glue of this family. She's the matriarch. Um, because it's known early on, or it comes out early on, that their mother, uh, Grand's daughter, left the family. She abandoned them um, a long time ago. And she actually lives in New York. And Abby says that she gets to see her ever so often. It's not as much that every, you know, it's not as much as people would think. But she does get to communicate and talk with her mom more than the rest of the kids do. And then we have... The dad, the dad is kind of, he gives me rich guy. I work a lot, but I care for my, like you can tell he genuinely loves his family. Like that's no question. It's just that his priorities are kind of out of whack and that affected the kids growing up. He was very much concerned with hustling, grinding, getting his real estate business up. And he is extremely successful now. And so it it, it gives like, I, I'm finding that maybe he's trying to redeem or reconcile, rectify the mistakes that he made in the past. Like he's, he's starting to see like, wait, maybe I wasn't there for my kids. Like I thought I was. And so he's learning to slow down and say no to things and be where he needs to be in terms of like, there's this sweet episode, uh, or I'm sorry, the sweet scene where Jess thought there was an intruder in her B and B, but it was actually her dad fixing the pipes. And at first she was like, dad, I got it. Like, you don't have to do this. He took no for an answer. He didn't take no for an answer. He kept going. You can tell that she really appreciated that. And he even told her how he was proud of her and things like that. Words of affirmation, you know, things that she wished she should have heard. She could have heard as when she was younger. Um, So that that's kind of cool with the dad. And then we have Ree, which I can't tell if she's older than Abby or younger than Abby. She gives me vibes that she's older than Abby. Um, she is a playwright in Chicago. I, I can't say much um, other than that, based off of what they've shown. She just, she seems, oh, I, I, I do want to mention with Jess. Jess is very bitter about her mother. She has, she wants nothing to do with her mom. In terms of Ree's relationship with the mom, I feel like there's room. Um, but again, we're not shown much with Ree in this first episode. Then we get Trace. Trace, played by but Jesse Metcalf, is Abby's ex. And they got bad blood. <laughs> Off jump, you first meet Trace when Abby goes to help Jess with her loan for the B&B. And Abby just kind of goes in thinking that Trace works there, but he doesn't. And so she feels like a fool. And throughout this episode, her and Trace sort of rekindle a friendship. Although you can tell that they are feeling each other because they end up swimming in a pool, swimming in a lake together, and they end up kissing. And it's like, what is what is going on right now? So I can totally see that they're going to get back together. Um, but Trace is holding this mysterious bit of information back from Abby as to why exactly he's back in town. Also, can we just say another instance where Jesse Metcalf plays a successful country musician? (laughs) But um, he's back. He's six months back in Chesapeake Shores. And but no one really understands why. And he's not forthcoming with the information either. I mean, granted, it's under their business, but he's not forthcoming with what the information is. But it seem, there seems to be something just w- with how the episode is curated. You can tell, like, there's a, a secret there that he's not willing to share. And so over the, the course of these next few episodes, I'm wondering if that's going to be the his storyline, is that there's this overwhelming secret with why he decided to move back that people are going to want to know but so also there's um towards the end of the episode we have a fourth of july scene which the father was like all he wants is his children home for, you know for fourth of july 
And then they're watching the fireworks, right? And there's a you hear the door of a cab close and they turn around and who is it but their mom? And they're like, what in the world? What is mom doing here? And the dad's like, yeah, I called her. And I'm like, whoa, well, that that's weird. I guess he won't, like really wanted the family around. And then so they greet the mother. They turn back around to look at the fireworks. They hear another cab door closed. And who is it but Brendan Penny? I forget his character's name. I'll be more pay more attention in the second episode. But he is the brother who went away to war. And he is now home. They've expressed multiple times in this episode how much they miss him. And they had no idea he was coming home. So that scene was just so cute. But it was, it literally was like five seconds and then the episode faded to black. I'm like, we couldn't get more of them hugging. It was like immediately Abby runs to him to hug him. And it was like, boom, then it went to black. So there wasn't room to really enjoy all of the family enjoying him and being surprised that he was back. I didn't like that. But I'm excited to see what the next episode is about. Let me let me tell me y'all. Do y'all watch Chesapeake Shores? What do you guys think about Chesapeake Shores? Because I'm a little bit interested now. This first episode has definitely piqued my interest and I look forward to the other episodes that this series is going to bring. Well, you guys, that is going to conclude this first review of Chesapeake Shores. I look forward to doing more of these and I will talk to you guys in the next episode.